Dear students, in today's module, I'm going to talk about the Chow Fassman algorithm. You know that the protein sequences, they are a determinant of the protein structure, and the protein structure determines the protein function. Therefore, it is very important to study the protein structures and compare them. However, if you want to do that, then you are encountered by a hurdle, that is, there are over a million proteins in the Uniprot database. We have their sequence information, molecular weight, PI, etc. However, for the protein structures, we only have over 100,000 structures that are there in the PDB. So in order to compare the protein structures, we have a very few number of structures. Is it possible then that we can use the sequence information in the Uniprot database and predict the protein structures? So that is a very important task in bioinformatics and we are going to talk about this in the module. Chow Fassman was the first algorithm devised by Chow et al. in 1974 which predicted the protein structure by simply looking at the sequence information. So for the protein structures and the protein sequences for specific proteins, can we use this information and try to predict protein structures for those proteins whose structure is not known but their sequence is known? That is the question that is addressed by the Chow Fassman algorithm. As we discussed earlier, that we can make a propensity table. So Chow et al. actually built up this propensity table and they counted which amino acid occurs in which secondary structure and how many times. So if you look at this slide, you can see glutamine and its propensities for alpha helices, beta sheets and turns along with the values. So if you want to see where glutamine may be found most probably, then by just looking at this table, you can predict that glutamine is mostly found in alpha helices. Similarly, if you look at methionine and alanine, you will find out that they are also most likely to be found in alpha helices because their propensity for forming a beta sheet or a turn is much lower than their propensity for forming an alpha helix. Chow et al. developed this statistic and they mined the protein sequence databases as well as the known structures and they came up with these values. If you want to use these values to predict the secondary structure, then it becomes very easy. Let us consider an amino acid sequence and by using this propensity table, see how we can calculate the overall secondary structure. In this example, the sequence for the amino acids is given here and the secondary structure which we want to predict out of them is given here. If you look carefully, then glutamine, methionine, alanine, are all alpha helix formers at a priority. Therefore, we make alpha helices out of these three amino acids as shown here. Next, if you look at the propensities for valine, isoleucine and tyrosine, then they are most probably forming a beta sheet. In this case, we have constructed beta sheets out of these amino acids. Next, if you look at proline and glycine residues, two of them here, you can see that they form turns and therefore we have assigned turns to these two. Now this is the secondary structure of a protein that is having a sequence that is given here. So first you have an alpha helix. Let's draw it to make it easier in terms of visualization. So you have a certain portion that is coming in from the alpha helix and then you have some beta sheet and then there is a turn and then you have a beta sheet followed by a turn as shown here for the turn and for the beta sheet this portion. Now if this protein was to be drawn you would see three amino acids as part of an alpha helix, three amino acids as part of beta sheet and two amino acids as part of a turn. So this is how this protein will look. Now, we want to evaluate if such a case 
will happen. Therefore, you can compute the propensity of the formation of this secondary structure. So for each one of these secondary structural elements and each one of these amino acids, you can just look up the propensity table and obtain the propensity values as shown here. For the beta sheets, these values are put here. For the turns, these values are put here. So by simply taking a product of the propensity of each one of these amino acids like this, you can arrive at, at the overall propensity for the secondary structure. So the propensity for formation of a secondary structure containing alpha helix, beta sheet and a turn in this configuration, it is 29.47. So this is how you can compute the propensity of different secondary structures. So in conclusion, given a protein sequence, you can simply look up for each one of those amino acids in that sequence from the propensity table, obtain the propensity for the specific secondary structure and take a product of all of those values and arrive at the overall propensity for formation of the secondary structure.